Okay, Grappler, today we're gonna look at some really bad Runeterra cards, and the idea here is that I try to buff these cards, try to literally break them, and you're gonna tell me if I did a good job or not, and if I did, what type of decks would you play these buffed cards in? Sounds simple enough. Um, are you trying to make them all broken or are you trying to make them all playable? Some of them are definitely going to be broken, but I'm aiming for playable and just making them more exciting in general. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'm sure most people already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What are some of your favorite cards and decks? I love playing Karma. So anything that goes with Karma. I enjoy playing Teemo. At least I used to back in Wayfinder days. Now, not as much. And just anything that is about delaying the game until you reach your win con. So just slow control and then winning with either a combo or something late game. All right, I'm not a very big fan of Ionia, but just for you, I included a bunch of Ionia cards anyway. <laughs> okay, the first card I have is actually completely custom made and inspired by you, Grappler, because I've heard stories of the great Papaya himself not being the greatest at hitting Allegiance. Swiper the two-timer. When I'm summoned, nab one. Allegiance, give the card to your opponent. Wait, what? Wait, huh? Allegiance, you give the card to your opponent? <laughs> so to get the benefit from this card, you actually need to miss Allegiance. Yeah, that's a really cool card. So what I'm thinking, you play this with Harrowing, and you can mill decks so easily if you get enough copies of this. You play this with P and Z, which forces dual draw. Um, actually, maybe not, because it's the same thing as draw one, right? It's just like the other card, the two, three. It's, it's almost the same thing. Yeah, so what I was thinking with this card, too, is that maybe if you play like a Bannerman deck, and you play 37 Demacia cards and like three swipers, the concept of getting an upside by missing Allegiance was just really, really interesting to me. I wonder how good the card is, though. Okay, forget about the whole uh, mill thing. I think it doesn't work. On its own, is nab one enough to justify 4-3 for 4 cost? Yeah, it might not. Maybe it should just be nab two. But, like, even if you cut out the allegiance, if it's just when I'm summoned nab one with no allegiance, like, would you play that in Demacia? No, not in Demacia. I guess you also kind of need to black mark a merchant. Yeah, exactly. So then you're playing it with other built over cards like your example was Demacia but I think even if it was a Demacian card with no allegiance I think I wouldn't necessarily play it okay so what would you do to make this card playable I wonder what it, it would be probably pretty strong if it was um when I'm summoned nab the top card allegiance nab the bottom card because then you can play it as like a, a bard counter yeah true hitting a couple of chimes would be pretty amazing all right we'll move on to the next card you might have seen this one before I have um, I love War Mother's Call. War Mother's Call has basically, like in my mind, been just a bad Field Rush for a really long time. It's been no sure. competitive deck that would ever play War Mother over Field Rush. And so I usually try to keep the same mana cost when I buff a card, but this one is a total rework. Let's see. Nine mana, War Mother's Call, summon two allies from your deck, round end, kill them, enlightened don't. The wording might be a little off. They probably wouldn't put it on the card like this, but you get the idea. There's some really crazy combos you could pull off with that. I would have probably made it summon two different allies from your deck, not to be the same one, because then otherwise, if you want to play like really OP combos, you kind of like have to run, what, run, run a, one of each, which is kind of awkward, or you got to hope RNG doesn't pull two of the same one. There's a lot of cool decks that can, that can benefit from this, like Lux decks that are mainly using spells to like summon stuff. You have a lot of Demacian cards to summon, like six mana summon a five cost unit, etc. The most straightforward would probably be Anivia. Yeah, I was thinking Anivia Dreadway when I first thought of it. That would be pretty fun to do, but but like yeah, and then you can just pull double Anivia, for example, which would be pretty spicy as well. I, I think it's insanely strong, depending how you build your deck, because you can easily build a deck these days with like if you if you go for example, Freljord Shadow Isles, you can build a deck with nothing under five cost. You have all the vile feasts, you have the avalanches, you have the ravines, you have so much clear, you have drains, and then all of a sudden mana six comes along, you pop nine mana, and you summon two Anivias. It's just such a good catch-up mechanic. So yeah, I, I think it's a really, really strong card. I don't think it's necessarily super broken, but I think it's very strong. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mostly did this to stop the card from just being a worse field rush. I saw Mogwai play a deck that was Demacia Freljord, I believe, with Big Citria and Tiana. Yeah. Oh, I, I built pretty much the same deck as him, but we had a few differences. It was when they released, I think they, they released a new ramp card or something that allowed for it. Or they just released the 10-cost card, Cythria. Yeah, only problem with that deck, it, it runs a lot of early game ramp. When more mothers hits that, it kind of sucks. Also, the round, you, gotta, you gotta keep in mind round and kill them. So you, you can't really play this early. You still have to play this in mana 10. Pretty much, but just in case you need the minions and maybe they have some last breath upsides like Anivia. Yeah, I think it's quite strong, but I don't think it's broken because, again, you have to wait for mana 10. You can't really play it on 6 on curve. What, what, what units are really good at dying early that you want them to die? Almost nothing. I mean, Trindomir is pretty solid stats. 
he would survive as a really big body. Other than him, I'm not sure. All right, so another problem with War Mother has been that your ramping cards, like Wording Stones and also Voices of the Old Ones, get summoned when, like you said, you really want a Tryndamere. So what if instead... Okay, that is so strong. I think that on its own would bring back War Mother's Call to an extent. I, I would, I, the only reason I don't play much War Mother's Call, because I think War Mother's Call has a lot of interesting um, things you can do with it. There's a lot of high-end units you really want to be able to cheat out of your deck, and it's hard to do because you also want to play more than one ramp card, and you don't have that many options for ramp. Th this is, uh, this can't be summoned from your deck, which is amazing. Also, it's a lot stronger because it can't really be killed unless you want to spend like prime removal. Yeah, I, I would definitely run this. Frillier runs a lot of board wipes. So usually you're building, like if it's a War Mother deck, you're usually building board wipe plus expensive units mostly. And um, you don't want to board wipe your own ramp engine. So this is, this is really, really good. So the only downside I see is that you can't really use the 0-3 bodies for late game as blockers. That is true. Although like how, how late into the late game are we talking about? Like once you already have War Mother down, you should have enough blockers, especially if you're running like Ruination. Oh wow, Ruination is actually really interesting too. The fact that your board players don't remove your ramp tools. I was mostly just thinking about how cool it would be to re reduce the low rolls and that was it. Exactly. Mana 6, you play Ruination and you're still ramping. I mean, you can spend 3 mana to kill it, but then you're spending 3 mana. Okay, awesome. Uh, next card is another ramp card. Uh, next is Strike, create a small wolf in hand in hand so my idea for this is that you never really want to block so you can deny your opponent the ramp yeah but what if there's like actually a really small upside the board gets if they get the hit in so it actually gives you like more blockers to stabilize i mean it's a lot better i wonder if it would be broken if it would summon a small wolf it's good for chump blockers and there's a little bit of fun synergy with things like they who endure because you just want to have a lot of cheap units to sacrifice and you can maybe play ramp in that deck but overall would it see play i think it depends on the deck what about a ramp deck would you play that there because right now i think any ramp deck just looks straight past this card i i considered it in the um, what's the name of the landmark that gives you challenger plus one attack Oh, uh, Grand Plaza? Yeah, I thought maybe Grand Plaza Hunting Boar, because at least there it gets, like, removal value, and it gives you the ramp, guaranteed. I mean, this is a really significant buff. I, I like it. I, I like the buff. I don't know if I would necessarily play it, but it's not bad. I would consider it. So if you think about just a Nexus Strike, do you think there would be a better or cooler effect for the boar? Summon a small wolf. I think that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Because <laughs> then they really don't want to... They really want to block it. That's a cool idea. I think maybe we'd even see play with this. Maybe. Originally, I actually had Nexus Strike heal your Nexus 2, but it didn't really feel impactful enough. I, I think I think that's pretty decent, though. I think that's pretty crazy. Because, like, all of a sudden, now you can play Hunting Boar versus any, any aggro deck. Uh, you're healing for two every turn. If they block it, well, at least you get some ramp, right? You play this one out of three, even versus aggro, they can't let you lifesteal for two every turn. So I think... Like, heal your Nexus for two every time it strikes Nexus is not bad. Blue Sentinel. I played this card. It was a, it was a solid card. Played a, a, some version. Wait, oh, wait, you put it on Ionia now. Oh. Ionia Blue Sentinel. That's such a cool karma card. Because Targon doesn't really need ramp. You never see Targon ramp. That's solid, man. I think it would see much more play in Aeonia. Aeonia doesn't have that I mean, it has Eye of the Dragon as a 2-drop. What other 2-drops does Aeonia run? I think it's mostly Eye of the Dragon for those type of decks. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, the Green Glade duo? Yeah, that's true. That one, that one sees play as well. Yeah, very cool change. I, I would enjoy that. Like, there's not really much craziness you can do. Like, just little tricks. You know, like, you could recall something to hand and you can burst it out to chump block. And, like, there, there, there's cool applications of it. And it still is a great chump blocker. I like it. Yeah, for your opponents, like the Hunting Boar, almost exactly the same. Because you really don't want to exactly. give them the ramp on the wrong turn, right? But luckily, this can block, so that's a pretty big upside. Who really benefits? I would just say Karma, and that's about it, maybe. I like this card, plus the dragon. I've, I've tried to make it work a few times. I remember the times where you would go for an open attack, and three of these assassins just jumped out of your opponent's hand when you yeah. wanted to get, like, a big hit in. Round start. Get an extra mana gem this round if you played two plus spells last round. So it's a it's a conditional ramp for one round, but it's a full mana gem. I mean, three two for two is average stat line. It's a strong effect. I, I kept the same stat line on this one, but it's definitely like an engine that you want to keep around like I. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I mean, Karma would see this. Karma might play this. It's it's a bit of a more difficult one to play because it gets removed so easily. It's not a guaranteed mana gem, but Karma would probably play it. Anivia, if if you ever play Anivia with Ionia, which you do sometimes, but rarely, or Shadow Isles. You do have to dawn and dusk Anivia, but you know, it's just 
a worse Shadow Isles. Yeah, it is worse, but it's fun. Like Anivia Karma was a thing for a little bit back in the day when card draw actually mattered. It was a cool deck. Now the card draw doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's it's kind of trash. The idea of like getting value is not as strong as it used to be. But this this is this is cool. I don't think it would see like very. How often do you play two spells consistently all the time? It's not that common. If this was a 1-3 like I, would you play it? I think I'd rather play it as a 3-2 because 1-3 one, one, can't block anything versus like generally with Karma, you're just losing to early aggro. You're not really losing to late game. You're losing to mid game some of the time. And with versus mid range, you have to really block efficiently to get one for ones. Otherwise, they overwhelm you with value mid game by like minus seven. So this can block things like Poppy. If she gets herself buffed, it's a small extra thing you have to do. But in general, it can block stuff and kill stuff. But a one three just can't. I the dragon is good because it, it can be a two for one very often. You summon dragonlings and also heals at the same time. Just keep in mind, if it was a one three, you already have a zero three that like from Freljord gives you free ramp, right? This is a conditional. Yeah, yeah, and it's like the flavor too, right? Where in Freljord, it's like the statues and the stones to ramp. And in, in Ionia, it's the, the, the spell casting, the two spells a turn. All right, here's the next card. Ah, uh, yes, the card nobody plays. <laughs> and here's the updated version. All right. University of Piltover Landmark 5 cost. You can play units and landmarks using spell mana. That's got to be insane, right? Ladra's turn six. Um, That's got to be absolutely broken in my head. I mean, is it though? You do lose five mana, do nothing on the turn you play it. Although you can play it on mana five and play a three cost next turn, but then you can't play a nine cost on turn six. What are some OP nine costs that save you the game? Like Gorlith turn six is interesting as well. But it's only for that, right? Because like by mana seven, eight, you no longer really get value out of it. It's a, it's a pretty dead landmark. It's only good if you play it on mana five. Yeah. So on turn five, you play this landmark and on turn six, you have like one crazy turn. And after that, it's like pretty useless. Some weird like semi ramp kind of deal. Exactly. It's a one time ramp basically. And it's pretty expensive at that, but it might be able to like really enable some crazy combos. Mana seven, you go for like a really soul. But even then, it's a very temporary ramp for one big unit. You have to think of what units really break the game. So you have the 10 cost from Freljord that obliterates everything, right? So we, we have this in Piltover, but do you think this could be seen as like a more consistent Targon's peak? It's a little more controllable for the player too. True, but Targon Peak gives you that for every turn. It gives you a different spell. It's also two ways. This is only one way. I feel like it's a little bit too slow. Would you play Piltover and Zahn with Freljord, for example? I don't know. Because you only really get one good turn out of it. Everything after that is going to be pretty meh. Like, it doesn't really give you value. Because on that one good turn, you're going to spend three spell mana. That means the next turn you have no spell mana, so you can't do anything with it. And you probably want to summon stuff like with most of your mana to catch up. So you're spending all your mana again. It's really hard to see like two really big turns out of it. It's possible if if you're going to spend very little mana after the first one. But if you're only getting one good hit, it has to be something that's game ending. Like She Who Wanders obliterates everything from hand and board. Yeah, I feel like this would see some experimentation. And then within the few, first few days, players would find a way to absolutely break this card. You think a deck would break it? I think with this type of effect, yeah. But yeah, then again, maybe not on a five mana landmark. Oh, the effect itself, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It, it breaks the balance of the game in a lot of ways. Okay, next up is a card that I completely forgot even existed. Freed Colossus. This is a card? Huh? Yeah, this is a real card. Oh, I think it just recently came out, right? I don't know what expansion, but yeah, this came out this year. When I was summoned or attack, created a gem in hand. Yeah, I, I recently built a gem deck and I typed gem and I saw it. I'm like, what the hell is that? When summoned or attack, created a gem in hand, your gems accelerate to burst. There's a lot of cool cards that interact pretty cool with gems. Um, I was building a, a Victor Glorious Evolution, the bot that gets a plus one plus one with every spell you run, with a Jade Medarda, and, and, the, and the four cost card that fills your hand with gems. So you can like infinite draw with zero cost gems off of Jade Medarda to look for your win cons for elusive swing with the robot. And this would just make it really cool because it's burst speed. You can like use it as a combat trick. But I don't think it's that great of a card. I don't think it would see play. What if it was like for the rest of the game? Just for the rest of the game. It's 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 cool because I mean with faded units having a burst speed faded proc is nice. But your opponent also always knows when you have a gem because I think there's no way to to generate a gem without your opponent seeing it in your hand. You you can use it, you can use it the turn you summon it. Like you summon free Colossus, they attack, you can still buff it to 5-5 five, five for one more mana. But having gems burst speed for the rest of the game, if you have a lot of gem generators, maybe. Because usually people don't play that many gem decks except for Faded. 
Yeah, exactly. And if there's like a mountain goat, then the gem is discard fodder. You use it to... Yeah. You just use it to draw another card. Exactly. But burst speed gems are pretty spicy. Like, they're good with fizz, for example. So I actually thought about making this a for the rest of the game type of effect. But if you're playing as Noxus with like a ravenous flock or scorched earth, it yeah. turns into a very frustrating situation for the Noxus player. 100%. Yeah, that would be very frustrating versus for Noxus. I could see that. I didn't even think of that. That's a good point. Okay, next up, I have another small kind of car package. Mm -hmm. Armed Gearhead. All right. What if it had this strict upside? Ooh, I have Challenger when I have four plus power. That's a pretty cool upside. It's also generated from the two mana spell that I forgot the name of. Calculated Creations? Yeah, that one I know. I, I played that card recently. I think it's very cool. I think you would play it with Targon. I think you play this with Targon with Billy the Goat, whatever his name is. And one gem plus Pale Cascade is enough to make this a 4-2 challenger, which is very, very early. Giving it 4 power is not easy. It would be a pretty cool combo to play this along with um, the 2-cost PNZ card, which transforms this into 4-4. Four, four. But I think you play it more often than not, maybe with Targon. Pale Cascade and gems work really well with it. Or you just play one gem on it and one gem on something else. So it, I think it's really easy to get the 4 attack. Only problem is it's turn 1, it really sucks. Parade Electro Rig. Oh my goodness, this card people wanted me to play this with... um. What are they called? Not Yetis, the Elnux. <laughs> Elnux. Don't get me started. Your one cost allies have augment and are tech. Okay, so it's only for one cost allies. So it loses the support text, but it's still very much a supportive card. Yeah, Um. I don't see it. I don't think it's good enough. It's a cool, cool idea. Augment is pretty cool on things like Fizz, but this has to survive for it to have Augment. Like maybe in some kind of really weird Fizz deck, you just want to like get multiple value for plus attack off of your created cards. Maybe like a Fizz deck. I can't think of any other deck that would really run this because your one cost are just so, so weak, right? And you don't want to run a lot of one cost cards in a deck. Yeah, you're right. If this card would see play, it'd be for the Augment keyword and it would be for like a one drop like Fizz. Ah, uh, yes. I remember this guy. Make a bad card in hand. Got it. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Parade Electro Rig had one side of Glorious Evolution, so I gave this guy the other half. When I'm summoned, draw one. Cards you draw created by Eminent. Wow. That's very strong. I mean, just four mana three three draw one on summon is not bad. Like it's not great, but it's not bad. It's it's pretty average. Like not enough to see play. But all of a sudden, all the cards drawn are created by him is insane. And he has augment naturally, which is a, a good a good plus sign. He, he's gonna easily be a five three or whatever. He needs to be on the board, and the only thing that grows is attack. So there needs to be a keyword to actually make use of the created cards. Yeah, I'm not even cons I'm not looking at him from the point of view of him being a finisher. He's not he doesn't have the stats to be that like he gets one get excited. He's dead for four. I'm looking at him more from the point of view that he trades really well for a four cost because he's not really a three three. He has augment and he guarantees you already draw one card that has augmentation because it's a created card off of it. So you can trade with like five HP units really well. So you would play him in an augment deck because even after he dies, right? All the cards you drew after he was on board would be created cards. So you could play those with any kind of deck that has either augment synergy or even something like the eight cost, what is it it's called? Um, the card that doubles created cards. I forget the name, but... Mirror Mage? Yeah, even like something like Mirror Mage. So whatever's in your deck, you can play with Mirror Mage pretty decently. Like, it's hard to find good Mirror Mage value because few cards are really created. But um, with with this, you can theoretically um get some pretty cool combos off. I love the possibility of Mirror Mage with this card. That is yeah. so awesome. I would definitely try to play with it. This plus Harrowing, I'm trying to think of, you would draw multiple created cards but that's not really that strong yeah it's probably carried by the fact that he draws one unsummon and then you have like the immediate payoff that you can sometimes use from that cartridge room well that was all of the cards i had for you today from the top of your head did you have a favorite out of all those cards i right before we did the call i uh i opened your youtube and looked at the mogwai video and i didn't really get far into it i got like i just scrolled through it i only saw one card you guys talked about do you remember the bayou brunch card oh yeah yeah the one with majin bay where you made... Oh, it was Majibay, not Magui. Yeah, I, I, I just forgot. I just saw it like a few few minutes before we started the call. That card is my favorite. Holy yeah. dude, I would play the hell out of that card. Now, I, I don't know if you guys mentioned it because I closed the video before you even finished talking about it, but I played a, a capture deck very often. Well, not very often, but I played it off stream as well. I really enjoyed it with Detain and using Detain defensively versus board wipes on stuff like Rekindler is just so much fun because let's say you have like Rekindler plus whatever on board and like they vengeance a unit. You put Rekindler inside it and you get a champion on board back or for example, 
they board wipe. You can do Ruination plus that, and um, you save your unit. You get, like, out of the Ruination, you get Rekindler plus your champion. There's just so many ways you can use trapping your own unit at burst speed inside a unit of your own. With Rekindler, it's 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 crazy shenanigans you can do. So I really like that card you did with him. But um, out of these, the three-cost landmark, it's a very, very good ramp for failure. I very much enjoyed that one. Last, I think it would be fun to play the 2-3 the from Ionia. Um ramp as well so i'd go for those three personally it would give some really cool ideas for deck building okay okay yeah not really that surprising after hearing what you said your favorite cards and decks were <laughs> true